Okay guys, you ready for this? I'm gonna drop the gate. Sometimes in farming, I guess always in farming, you gotta take some risks. Sometimes you gotta take bigger ones. Good morning. You feeling good today? Look guys, got the turkey bacon cooking and lots and lots of butter. Look at these orange eggs. Absolutely incredible orange eggs. I mean, you don't see anything like that. You cannot buy that in the store. You know they're sick when they voluntarily put themselves to bed early. He's just got a little cold, I think, a runny nose, blurry eyes, as he says, and a cough. So we're gonna, we're gonna come up with some remedies for that. Because Jonah is sick today and not feeling well, I decided that I needed to make some elderberry syrup for him. So the ingredients are six cups of water, one cup of elderberries, ginger, cloves, and a cinnamon stick. And turn it on high. I like to get it boiling and then I simmer it for 45 minutes. After straining out the liquid, the next step is to go ahead and mash the berries to get all the extra liquid out of them. Okay, so now I'm going to take the berries, get all of the extra liquid out of them. Now that we have let the mixture cool a little bit so that we can still retain the good properties of the honey, I'm going to add our one cup of honey and stir it up and try it out on the kids. <coughs> Next, I label, date it, and put it in the fridge. It will be good for about three months. So it was Josiah's idea to have a picnic in front of the fire. So this is where we're gonna eat our lunch. Ooh, beautiful one. What you got making, what you got going there? Okay, I'm making Italian salad dressing. It's Heavenly Homemakers nice. recipe. And it's and got garlic powder, onion powder, thyme, oregano. All right, picnic by the fire. What do you think about this? <laughs> you like sitting on the floor? I like sitting by the fire. <laughs> oh yeah. It's nice and warm. Good idea, Josiah. And you're right at home here. I think so. Be happy with Peter. This is your thing. What do you say? <laughs> be happy with Peter. <laughs> Anyway, we were talking about the cow. So I think that they follow. I think they'll follow Willow. Well, but what about Nick? Is That's, he going to? He's the wild card. Nick is unhandled. He's the one I'm concerned about. Yeah. So if I had somebody else to kind of be behind them, herding them down the road, I think it's possible. We're probably gonna laugh ourselves a year from now, being like, "You can herd those cows wherever the heck you want them to go," and I've got. I've got them going through this field. It's a pain in the butt because you gotta you gotta get them into that gate and then you gotta get them off that gate and cross the main road and haul them up. So why not use the tr the lane we already have set up, the public road? Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Okay, guys, there's the cows. Um, they're waiting. They follow Willow, that lead cow. I can grab her and put her on a leash. Got the leash wrapped around my neck. The, one of the problems is is this road. That's to the public. Now we're gonna. We're gonna leash her up and walk her through here, man. I hope this works. I hope the title of this, this vlog is not, uh-oh, the cows escaped. I hope it's like, bam, how to move some cows. Okay guys, you ready for this? I'm gonna drop the gate. Sometimes in farming, I guess always in farming, you gotta take some risks. Sometimes you gotta take bigger ones. See, they're not coming. They're being hesitant. Come on, come on, shagavers. But here he comes. This is good. Bam, so far, we're bamming. They get antsy in new things. They like a routine. Cow's eye view, folks. Now, we're gonna see if they make the cut down into my gravel driveway instead of going straight through. Now, if this is gonna be this easy, I'm so gonna laugh because I've been going through that field for like two years. I get down here and hopefully they'll know where to go. Okay, I'm just gonna put this leash around that. He's a little confused. 
So maybe it's because they don't know what they're doing. Not what we want him to do. We want him to go down this gravel road. There we go. Now he's doing. Now he's got it. Not worried about him now. I think he'll see that fence and he'll go to Willow. Okay guys, let's get let's get Scarlet. I'm not too worried about her. Cause she's handled. She's been out before. Look, she knows the drill. We did it. We did it. Now if it's gonna be that difficult, that's not gonna be worth it every time. <laughs> but if they get in the routine, which I think they will, uh it'll just go so smooth. I've been I've been a little bit worried about Willow and her weight. There's been, you know, it just seems a little hollow right there, like maybe a little more than usual, and maybe a little sunken in there. She, I could tell when she's eating enough every day because her belly on her left side gets full, but that's a daily measurement, and so I want to know overall condition. So I got the beautiful one on it. She's amazing research. She found this amazing article from uh, Reformation Acres, and they so kindly put up an amazing article with a, a cool chart to check your cow's conditioning, okay? And we're gonna go through that, but I'm also gonna link it up in the resources. And so, there's a rating one through five. Okay, one is like too skinny, five is too fat, so I imagine you're gonna wanna be somewhere at the three-ish range. Now, this is not a traditional dairy cow, which tend to look even skinnier. This is a, a multi-purpose, dual-purpose, so I'm probably gonna want her to be leaning on the little heavier side, like uh, three and a half, four-ish. And now that I'm looking at this chart, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so the first one to look at would be the vertebrae, vertebrae going down this back, okay? You can see that hump going there. Okay, you can see that, guys? Uh, looking at it from this angle, uh, we compare it to this, it's definitely not one, that's craziness. Uh, it's, I'm thinking it's a three. Uh, let's go to the next one, which, which would be the rear view cross section of the bones. If you guys see those um, two hip bones sticking out, see this hip bone? And that hip bone, she's patient with me. Okay, we're looking at this dip right here, okay? We're gonna look at this dip. It's not very drastic on her, but it is there. You know, it's between three and four, easy. So this is so easy, guys. So, so far, guys, I'm at like a three and a half. We're doing good, I don't even worry my little heart out. She is pregnant too, so that's another concern for me. I want her to be getting her good conditioning. And guys, with food like this, green grass in the afternoon, and you know some vegetables in the morning over there on that field if she's going in fat like this every night i'm feeling pretty good about it okay guys we have a no problem there see that hook bone sticking up um we i don't think we're gonna have a problem there we're about three and a half four and then this last one the tail this one i'm having a hard time checking you know it's this cavity between the tail head and pin bone rear view that's hard to tell but there, there's a deeper cavity there, okay? And it seems a little deeper than maybe it usually is, okay? So I'm gonna give, based on these pictures, yeah, you can see that there's absolutely no cavity on that number five, and there's a lot of cavity on one. I'm gonna give her a three. I mean, based on what we've been saying so far, so that gives me peace. Becky. What? I saw you. So I come in here and I smell this amazing smell. And look, vodka and vanilla bean, which makes vanilla. So check out this bucket of scraps, man. I probably wouldn't even had a fiend grain today. This is, this is like halfway full. This is so much weight. My spoiled chickens, they eat better than some people. Man, you gotta do what you gotta do, right, beautiful one? Right.